Rama Worship Center. How are you guys doing today on this Tuesday afternoon? We are in the house of the Lord. Thank you for joining with us Amen. online and in service. And um, we're going to have a great day today. Um, announcements. Uh, this Sunday is Family Sunday. So there will be no service. So I'm like, oh, man, I know. No service this week. Right. But still get after him in, the, in, in your prayer closet and have your time with God. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're going to start with uh, praise and worship today. And then um, Pastor Charles is going to speak today. So um, whoop, whoop for that. Let's keep it going. And um, yeah, let's do it. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. We need to pray first. God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for bringing us today in your presence. God, we thank you for bringing us to the house of the Lord. God, God, I ask that God, you just continue to cover and have your way, God, in our lives, God, to continue to be a lamp unto our feet, God, to show us in the direction you want us to go, God, for us to be willing to submit to your will, God, and to do the things that you have for us, God. And Lord, you just continue to walk in our lives, God, breathe over our household, God. God, I ask now, God, that you just continue to overflow our cups, God, to where it spills over to the people connected to us. In Jesus' name, I pray, God. Amen. 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 Let's do it. All right. In other words, just let's just go into it again. All right. Calling on the God of Jacob, who loves and nurses through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. Oh how I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. That's God. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor is the walk of me. I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David. Who made a shepherd of the courageous? I may not face the life, but I've got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. I need you now. Oh, I know I could be just I'm standing on your faithfulness For your faithfulness Oh, God, my God, I need you Oh, God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh, I go, I go, ages I'll stand in all your faithfulness, all your faithfulness. I'm standing on you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. You heard your children then 
You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then. You will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. God moved in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the healer then. You are a healer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the same God now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You freed the captives. You freed the captives now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. Oh how I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, I'm all of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Yes, God. Praise you. We stand on your faithfulness, God. God, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for praise and worship. And now we're going to have Pastor Charles come up, deliver the word for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Afternoon, everyone. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As soon as I can put this away, I can be prepared. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You did an outstanding job with praise and worship. I just want to acknowledge that. The beautiful choice of songs, the same God then and the same God now. Amen. It is Tuesday evening Bible study time. Tuesday evening Bible study time for the past five weeks, four or five weeks, we've been talking about God's goodness and how we should be obedient in loving in God that loves us, that first loved us. We should be returning to God, a God who hears our pleas and our cries, a God who understands our everything that we are going through when we go through it, a God who does not take for granted that we are his children and we are doing his will to help move the kingdom forward. So I will pray. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all honor and glory. Father God, we understand that the battle is not ours, but it belongs to you, Lord. Lord God, as we mature into the things of your will, as we mature into the Christians that you desire for us to be, followers of Christ, that you desire for us to be the light shining bright in this world, that you desire for us to be the salt of the earth, that you desire 
for us to be Father, as we mature into those things, as we dig in and dwell with you, Father, and dig into your word and allow Holy Spirit to come in to enlighten, to open our eyes so we can see that which said the Lord and not only hear from you, God, but to be a doer of your will and word, not grumbling. We don't take this for light. We don't take this for granted that you, God, have called us, man, to be amongst your people. That you, God, have given us a charge to go out and preach your word. We don't take that lightly, Father. And we know that we are not only to just read the word, talk about the word on Sundays and Tuesdays, but we are to live the word. For we are the church, Lord. So, God, I thank you and I praise you. I give you all honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to, we had praise and worship, but I had a, I love you, Lord, and I live my voice. To worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Yes, Lord. I just I just had to say that. Please, Amen. Lord, let it be a sweet sound in your ear. Wow, wow, wow. That's all I can say. I, there, there's no title for tonight. If there is a title, it's wow. We are in the month of June. We are coming up fast on the end of the month of June. We are almost halfway through the year 2022. And that's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that we are almost there. In six months, we've almost closed the first half of the year. In six months, We've done so much in six months. We have preached the gospel to all who would listen and receive. We have assisted people when assistance was needed and we were in a position to bless and to assist. We've done all of these things. We've labored before the law in terms of digging into his word, devotion time, preparing our, not just our bodies, but more importantly, our spirits for the spiritual warfare ahead because of the work we are doing on God's behalf. And we've done all of this out of obedience. Not a grumbling obedience, but a love obedience, a reverence for God, just like we had for our parents. But now, saints, is not the time for us to grow faint in our doing. It's just six months. We have six more to go. For those of us who are feeling weary, there is a need for a refreshing a need for a refueling of your spirit. So I admonish you at this time, this juncture, this walk with Christ, that we take time to redevote energy to doing the will of God, studying, resting when we can, 
because life has a way, we all know this, life has a way of, of just keeping us busy. You wake up, you have plans to do one, two, and three, and all of a sudden you have to change your plans and now you have to do three, two, and one, and five, and six, and four. It's just that way. But we cannot at this time grow weary. If you need to, we need to take the time when we have the time, don't sit in front of the TV. Don't play Candy Crush. But rest up your physical body and shore up your spiritual body by digging into the Word of God. That's what we need to do. This is not the time to give up or give in. Mm -hmm. We have to stay the course. We have to stay the course. So what are we doing as, as disciples of Christ, ambassadors for Christ? What are we doing as followers of Christ? What are we doing as those who are seeking the heart of God? So we can say, and we can hear God say, rather, well done, thy faithful servant. What are we doing? Are we just to exist from Sunday to Tuesday and Tuesday to Sunday? That's, I, I hardly doubt that is the plan that God has in place for us. He has not called us out of darkness into his marvelous light just to turn the light on on Sunday, turn it off. Tuesday comes, turn it back on, turn it off, and wait till Sunday get here again. That's not the plan. We should be spreading the gospel of Christ to all. We should be walking this thing out. We should be living it. People should be Breaking down the walls, so to speak, to get to you, to get an answer, to hear what thus said the Lord for them. We are the light of the world. We are a, we are the salt of the world. God has commanded and wills us to be his representation here on earth. Are we spreading the gospel? of a Savior who has redeemed all or who will, to all who will accept redemption? Are we unafraid to share the gospel, unbothered by the distractions of this world and bold in our commitment to God's will? You have to walk in your authority. You have to. You don't see a lion allowing a tortoise to tell it what to do. You don't see an elephant allowing a lion to tell it what to do. You have to walk in your authority. When you begin to walk in your authority, when you begin to exercise not your strength, but God's strength through you, or you'll become a different person. You'll become a different person and people will begin to see you differently. No longer will they say, you know, oh, I can't trust that person to do this or that. They'll start saying, that's the go-to guy. That's the go-to guy. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Mark 13, 10, and the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Mark 16 and 15, he said to them, 
Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. We hear everybody now talking about, oh, the end times are here, the end times are here. Well, the gospel must first be preached to all nations. That's what the Bible says. The kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We haven't reached all nations. There are some pockets in nations. There are some pockets in countries, in cities, in regions, in localities, whatever word you want to use, that the word is not being preached. Now notice I didn't say that the word is not being accepted, but the word is not being preached. It is not on us to figure out if it's going to be accepted. They have to want the word. They must want a change. So yes, we have rumors of wars. Yes, we have wars. Yes, we have famines. We have wildfires. Yes, the rainforest is on fire. Yes, there's drought. Yes, the water is bad. From one city in the United States to a country in Africa. But is the gospel being preached to all creation? So we say, wow, yes, six months. But yes, six months, we still have six more months to go before we can close out this chapter. We have a long road ahead of us, and we must remember that. But if we are growing weary in our doing, we must remember that we are the children of God. It is not our doing. We don't do this on our own physical abilities. We don't do it on our own spiritual abilities. abilities. Paul admonishes us in Romans 12, and I'll be reading from the Message Bible, Romans 12, 9 through 13 in the Message Bible. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves filled in a flame. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expect it. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be inventive in your hospitality. <clears throat> and the NIV says, never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. It's not time to burn out. It's not time to feel like you're doing it by yourself. That is why we have churches. So we can share the load. That is why we have different ministries in the church to share the load, to reach more. What sense does it make if pastor goes one place, we all go in the same place with him to do the same thing he's doing? We can reach more people if we branch out. If branching out was a bad idea, there wouldn't be so many stores of the same name in different neighborhoods. There wouldn't be so many fast food restaurants of the same name within five miles of each other. God knows there's a coffee company. They put a place on every corner in the major cities. What would happen if we got on every corner where the major coffee company was? 
You go get your latte? Come on out, I'll give you some latte. The word of the Lord. You go in there and get your frappe? Come on, I'll give you some refreshing word of God. What would happen if we did that? If we stood on every corner that the coffee shop was, how many more people as Christians could we reach? We have not come these six months on our own doing. God knows I couldn't have made it by myself in these six months. It's been some trying time from January until today. I'm not even thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring its own cares with it. And tomorrow, God's grace and mercy will be new and refreshing unto me to get through that day. So we've come this far by faith, so why should we give up now? You just heard the praise and worship team say God is always faithful. God has always shown himself faithful. I want you to think back. Look back on your own life. Think back on your own times when you know that you would have been in a bad situation. But God, and as the old folks say, he has somebody praying for you. The psalmist says, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you. We know we have not come this far. If we are honest, God is always faithful. And there is never a reason for us to believe that God does not care for us, about us, or the situations that this world tries to throw at us. Because we definitely know that God cares about the spiritual warfare that we enter into. He sends help for us. He gives us a passage of scripture, a word to read. He gives us a message from someone. Whether it's coming from the altar or it's coming from a co-worker who is a light believer. It's just a word of encouragement to keep us going. God cares for us. There are spiritual attacks. And the past five weeks, I have been talking about loving God, loving yourself, learning how to worship God, learning how to dwell with God. Dig into God's word. And because you're getting this, as pastor would say, you're getting the intel on how to win this, while, like Pastor Sam said, maturing into the things of God, yes, there are spiritual attacks. Spiritual attacks come. And if anybody told you following God then now you got a, a life of golden streets, no headaches, no hiccups, no confrontations, no challenges, no roadblocks, then they lie to you. I got ready yesterday to cut my grass. One day, it didn't rain. The grass wasn't all that dry, but it was dry enough that I could cut it and knock it down. Because today it rained, this morning, tomorrow it's supposed to be raining, Thursday is supposed to be raining, I understand Friday is supposed to be raining. So if I wait until Saturday, 
or late Sunday or a Sunday afternoon, my grass will be about a foot and a half, maybe two feet tall. So I said yesterday, I said, I'm go out here, I'm going to cut the grass. I pull my lawn tractor out. I pull up, I check the tires, the oil, the gas. Fill the tires up with air. Turn the tractor back on. Get ready to put it in drive forward. Nothing. Now it's 90 degrees outside with humidity is probably feeling about 110. Can you say, I know you were hot? Yeah, I know you was hot. Yeah. But I had to realize, for whatever reason, God said, slow down yesterday. I got a word from a co-worker who's a life believer, and he said, it's too hot to be cutting grass. You shouldn't do that today. But here's the amazing thing. If you would have caught me six years ago and back, Oh, I would have been cussing the lawnmower. I probably would have took a bat to it. I probably would have shot it, to be quite honest with you. I probably would have went out and bought a new one on the spot. But can you say, but God? But God. But God. And the reason I say that is because I have matured in understanding that all my spiritual attacks don't always come from people. Sometimes spiritual attacks just come from the cares of the day. To test, to see if you have that word down inside of you. And if you're going to be able to pull it up and live it. Like I said, you don't study to show yourself approved to another person. You show yourself approved. You study to show yourself approved. So when situations like this come up, you're not cussing. You're not reaching for the bottle, the gun, the knife, whatever. You're not trying to blame somebody for what happened. And you study to show yourself approved to let the enemy know it ain't working today, Slim. Mm -hmm. I ain't falling for your tricks. Yeah. So what did I do? I know it's going to rain. I can't move the lawn tractor. I took my key out, tilted my seat over so it won't gather rainwater. I went inside. I fixed me something to eat, and all the while I'm praying, God, I'm not buying a new tractor. God, yes, I want my tracks. I want my tractor with the tracks on it so I can go up and down and over bumps and hills and valleys, and I can just cut, 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 cut. <laughs> But I'm not buying a new tractor, Lord. So today comes, and I'm going home, and I remembered a guy. I remembered a guy, and I stopped by the guy's house, and I said, <clears throat> I need you. I need you. He said, what's going on? And I told him what was happening. He said, I tell you what, I need you. And it's good you came by right now because I'm working on some things, but I need at least 20 to get to your house so I can put gas in my, my car, my vehicle. I said, here's $20. I'll be there. He said, and I'll be there as soon as I gas up. Lo and behold, a guy comes, $20, right? 
15 minutes, my tractor is running, ready to cut, and it looks like the day I bought it because he cleaned it up. <laughs> All that for a total of $40. I could have gotten mad. I could have started cussing. I could have tilted the lawnmower over. I could have shot it up. I could have ran it over with my truck. I could have done a lot of things out of my anger, but I recognize that this too is a spiritual attack. Study to show yourself approved, the Bible says. A workman that need not be ashamed And because of my obedience, as we all know, obedience is the key to God's heart. Sacrifice is good, but obedience is the key to God's heart. $40, 15 minutes. And that is what God wants to do in our lives. God desires for us I cannot do this, God. I need you. I can't do this. I need you, Father. I need you. I desire to dwell with you, but I'm being distracted. The baby needs diapers. The children need shoes. My wife said I don't spend enough time with her. My husband said I don't cook the meals the way his mama cook them. God, I need you. When we can be as transparent as that with God, he comes in and helps us. He assists us. We should not be allowing people situations or our own fears to rule over our faith. Mm -hmm. God is faithful. You just heard the praise team. I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. He was faithful then. He's faithful now. The same God of Mary, Moses, Abraham, David is the same God that we serve. We must stand firm in our beliefs that we have confessed. We must continue, as Paul says, to run the good race. Paul never said he won the race. But guess what? Paul never gave up running the race. Every year there, the Boston Marathon, or this marathon, or that marathon, and and. Every year we celebrate the person who runs the race and wins. My question is, why aren't we celebrating the person who ran the race and never gave up? Even though they knew when they started the race they weren't going to win. Even though the odds were stacked against them to even finish in a time limit that they set for finishing the race. Why don't we celebrate that person? Because see, that person, that person is coming to the race already with a set of challenges, with a set of weights, with a baggage claim that they shouldn't be even running in the race with. And when you even look at these marathoners, you look at that person who finishes under the time limit, they look nothing like the person who won the marathon. Why don't we celebrate that person? Why don't we say to the people, the Christians that are giving it their all, that are doing the best they can, where is their support? Why don't we acknowledge the hard work that they're doing? I'm just saying. Just something that just came up. Ain't the Right. 
Right. As ambassadors for God, for Christ, God is not expecting us to do it all, but God is expecting us to do all he has ordained us for. If God has ordained you for one thing, you should not be trying to do something else. Do that thing which God called you to do. And do it with fervence. With all your heart. But most importantly, do it out of obedience. And we all know when you're not doing it out of obedience, if you want to know how that looks, go and read Jonah, the closing chapter. Now, I'm certain the canker worm who came and ate up the, the shade tree, Jonah may have died from a heat stroke out there. But he did it not out of obedience, but he, he did it because he got tired of suffering. But if he had only done what God asked him to do out of obedience, it would have been a different story. Hebrews 10, 23 let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. There's that word again. Faithful. God is faithful. God is not expecting us to do this all, all of his kingdom work by ourselves. But he is expecting us to at least fulfill our part. The knee cannot perform for the hand. The hand cannot perform for the mouth. The mouth cannot perform for the ears. We all have to play our part. We all have a part to play. We must remember that our obedience and devotion is key. It is key to overcoming spiritual warfare. It is key to winning the battle through Christ, through God's strength. It is key in all we do. It is key for us to dwell with God, to get a better understanding of where and what he wants us to do, our purpose in life. We spend time with people that we love, we spend time with the things that we love, the activities we love, but we have to spend time with God. And it must be done out of obedience. God is God our first love. We profess he is. We were born into his love. Born into sin, but out of his love we were born. Does not God's goodness, his grace and mercy shown toward us warrant our time of devotion with him? Exploring and digging into his word to get a better understanding how we can apply, because that's what we're about, or we should be about. As followers of Christ, we should be about the application of the word, not just the hearing of it. The application. And we say we love God, but what do our actions say? I believe it's Maya Angelou. She says, when people show you who they are, believe them. So what are people believing about you? Are they believing that you are a Sunday and a Tuesday Christian? Or are they believing that you are a devoted follower of Christ? A light in a dark world. A pillar of hope where there seems to be none. A rock that they can go to for assurance or, or for some, some motivation that they may. Are you doing those things that need to be done? Again, you heard me say last week, a young recruit now in the NFL says, we have to pray 
because it's up to God. But we also have to work like it's up to us. Faith without works is dead. That's the best way it's said. Pray like it's pray because it is up to God, but we have to work like it's up to us. That's faith. That's faith. This is not a, 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 a get your Powerball ticket. You put your money in and you sit back and wait. This is like cooking a good meal. Like I said last week, they can send you the, the whole meal kit. They can send you the chicken, the steak, the shrimp, the asparagus, the linguine. They can send you the yeast rolls, the butter, the garlic, the seasonings. But if you don't put some work in to pull all that together and prepare it, you're not going to be eating a meal. You're not going to eat a meal. We have to put some work in. We have to do our part. Now is not the time for us to grow weary. Now is not the time for us to give up. Now, in these summer months, is the time for us to dig our heels in and push hard. Push into God's word. Lean into God. Let him know we need you, God. And if you're not doing it for yourself, I know I'm doing it for myself. We having some real candid conversations, God and I, nowadays. No longer am I going to him, oh Lord, please come by here. Send your angels, help me, Father dear. No, look, I need some help. If you don't do this right now for me, God, I, I really can't I can't see how it's going to get done if you don't do it. I need you, God. I need your help. Mark 12. Mark 12. Verses 28 through 34. So we must live out our lives before others to see. And we do it out of obedience. We do it out of <coughs> our love for God. But more importantly, we do it because we have a relationship with God. As parents, our children can't come to us and say, hey, uh, I would like to go uh, to the field trip or I need a new pair of shoes. If there's no relationship there, if your child just came home, went in their room, shut the door, came back out, ate, shut the, went back in the room and shut the door, as a parent, I'm, I'm, I'm a little put off by that. But if I can sit down and talk with my child, spend time with my child, have a relationship with the child. That child can come to me at any time and ask when they need help in their time of need. Out of love, I will help them. And if we love and profess that we love God, then that should be evident and seen by others. And, and, and if we say we love God, but we don't love our neighbor, then we really don't love God. Mark 12, 28 through 34. And Jesus is, is, is answering questions from the scribes, right? And one of the scribes came and having heard him, the others talking, 
And perceiving that he had answered them well, this scribe asked Jesus another question. He says, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him and said, the first of all of the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like namely of the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that asked him any question. That was a drop the mic moment. At that point, Jesus said, look, if whatever you're doing, if you don't love God, if you don't love your neighbor as you love yourself, forget about everything else. You're doing it for nothing. Now is not the time to grow faint. Yes, there are people on our jobs getting on our nerves. Yes, there are people in traffic getting on our nerves. Yes, our neighbors may be getting on our nerves, but do we love God? Then we have to show the love of God. That's a drop the mic moment right there. The man said, all of that, and the scribe said, all of that is more than all whole burnt offerings. Not a half a pig, not a half a calf, not a half a cow, but the whole cow, the whole pig, or the whole calf being offered up unto God. That's more than any offering or sacrifice. When you get those two down in your heart, then you're truly living for God. You're doing God's will. And doing God's will and showing God's love to others becomes easier for you. So now when your tractor breaks now, you're not reaching for your shotgun to blow it up and run out and buy another one. You're sitting back and saying, wait a second, I know a man. I know a man who can fix this both in the spiritual and the natural. I know a man who can fix the tractor, and I know a man who can fix my disposition towards the tractor. I know a God who can do that. And I know a man who can take care of the natural stuff. We must have a relationship with God. We must go to God. We must be transparent with God. We must do these things so we can mature in the things of God. A relationship with God can be blessed and wonderful if we allow it to. God desires to have that type of relationship with us. But we have to be willing. He's not going to force himself on us. My father used to always say, you can't take was not being given. God is not a God who's going to, in a sense, spiritually rape us. He's not a God who's going to spiritually rob us. He's asking for us to come unto him willingly. And in our obedience of doing so, we are blessed going, blessed coming, we're blessed in the, the, the doorways, in the 
walkways, wherever we work, wherever we, we, we go to school, wherever we are at, we are blessed. We are blessed. I want you to turn your Bibles to Proverbs 20, verses 4 through 7. Remember, I started this, I said, wow, six months. I said, we can't grow weary. Proverbs 24 through, verses 4 through 7. And I'm reading from King James. The sluggard would not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. The just man walking in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. There it is. We can't grow weary. If we don't grow weary, we dig into God's word, we can pull out of God's word what he decides for us to do. My time is almost up. I just want to remind you, though, if you find yourself irritated, overwhelmed, you best believe that's a sign that you're spending less time with God and more time with this world. Because spending time with God is the key to our strength and success in all areas of our lives. Be sure that you never try to work God into your schedule. You shouldn't be doing that. God should be in your schedule every day, every hour. And your schedule should work around God, not God around your schedule. My time is up. I thank you for yours. That concludes tonight's study of the Bible. And I'm just going to close out with a quick prayer and then we're going to have Pastor EJ come up and send us home. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We give you glory, God. For you and you alone are worthy, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. Let us continue the good fight. Let us run the good race. Let us stand, stand firm on your word, Father. Your promises, because you are faithful. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for the word. Amen. And uh, we just want, like we said earlier, no announcements. Uh, I mean, the only announcements is uh, this Sunday is uh, Family Sunday, so there will be no service. Uh, thank you guys for being here with us and and, and diving into God's word uh, for Bible study. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pray up out of here. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. God, we thank you for you just having your way, God. God, we ask, God, I ask now, God, that you are people, God. We are your people, God. And I ask now, God, that you just cover us, protect us, God, yes. so as we come, God, wherever we are, God. Yes, Lord. And that your presence never cease from us, God. Yes, God, we praise you. We thank you, God. I ask now, God, you just make things happen for us, God. For the front parking spot is in our favor. In Jesus' yes. name. And God, we just continue to love you, God. God, we continue yes. to press into you, God. Yes. And God, we know that your love is always open arms for us, God. We praise you and we thank you. And just then we pray. Amen. Amen. God, have a good rest of the week now. Boom. See y'all. <laughs>